Welcome to Your Health, I'm Lisa Hart. Did you know that virtual and augmented reality is not just used in online games and applications, but it is also used in the operating room? Our guest, Dr. Robert Lewis, has been involved with the development and implementation of virtual and augmented reality for preoperative simulation, rehearsal, and intraoperative navigation. The 3D VR AR platform is provided from a surgical theater and was developed based on flight simulator technology from F-16 fighter jets. Today I am joined by Dr. Robert Lewis, who joins us from the Pickup Family Neurosciences Institute at Hogue. Well, welcome Dr. Lewis, thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks so much for having me, I appreciate the opportunity. Well, you know, you have an awful lot of, you have an awful lot of information that we're going to be sharing primarily about AR and uh, VR technology, which is unbelievable what you're doing with it today. Can you give me a brief background on what you have been doing, not necessarily with that technology, but what did you do prior to it and how did you implement this technology into what you do today? Uh, so I'm a neurosurgeon, uh, specifically trained in minimally invasive neurosurgery. Um, so tr instead of you know traditional open approaches to taking out brain tumors, I'm trained in trying to do these through naturally occurring orifices such as the nose or a little incision behind the ear. And so uh, throughout the course of that training, we're exposed to a significant array of technology as well as techniques uh, to make surgery less invasive uh, and therefore more successful um, with uh, better outcomes for the patients. So as part of that training, we kind of uh, develop uh, you know, a filter or, a, you know, kind of uh, ability to understand how all the different technologies play together. Uh, and then about six years ago, I was recruited to Hogue to uh, do exactly this, to bring minimally invasive techniques and technologies uh, into neurosurgery and beyond. Uh, and so I've been here about six years and uh, that's exactly what we're doing. Now, prior to you coming across this, this uh, technology, you just did things in a normal, traditional way. Can you compare what it was like before this type of technology? Uh, for lack of a better expression, it's like night and day. I mean, you know, if you compare the way we used to do it, for, for example, taking out a brain tumor, you know, underneath the frontal lobe, we'd have to remove the front half of the skull, so the, literally the, the entire forehead, in order to get underneath. Now, using minimally invasive technology and with the ability to rehearse, we can make a little incision in the eyebrow and kind of just make a hole the size of a quarter and sneak under the frontal lobe and do the same operation, but instead of staying in the hospital for 10 days or two weeks, they're home in a day or two. So the results are lower post-operative pain, lower rates of neurological complications, better rates of tumor removal, believe it or not, uh, and better overall outcomes. Was it, a, what is it, was it a tough technology to train and to learn? No, not at all. In fact, uh, quite the opposite. I was not, believe it or not, a video game kid when I was growing up. So VR and these kind of immersive technologies were not something I was accustomed to. Uh, but when you put it on, when you put the VR headset on, it's so intuitive that it kind of, you know, you feel your way through it. Uh, you know, it takes a couple of cases of practicing to, to learn how the hand controllers work. But then once you get the flow of that, uh, it really does enhance the way that we do things. It, it's just amazing. I, I, we're showing some video and, and you do, you're holding certain types of things with your hands. And, and what is that actually controlling? Wh which way you look or what is that controlling? So, um, anything you want, basically. The controllers can be set to control which way you're looking, but generally which way you're looking is kind of controlled by looking you know, up and around and inside the head. Essentially, the system simulates your presence within the operative environment. So it allows me to feel what it's going to feel like when I get into the actual surgery. Not on a model or an ideal patient or an anatomical drawing, but on this particular patient. In addition, the controllers can be used to replicate the functions of surgical instruments. For example, there's a drill. So if I want to simulate drilling the little hole above the eyebrow, I click the drill on and then I can actually feel, and believe it or not, the controller vibrates just like the drill does to simulate what it'll feel like when I get there in surgery. There are simulations of other instruments as well. For example, you know, clips for aneurysms or probes to remove tumors. And so Anything we use in the operating room, we can simulate the use of prior to and really do the operation in VR several times just so that when we do it on the patient, we get it right the first time. 
Okay, excellent. All right, so we're going to take a break right now, and then when we come back, I want to dive a little bit further into some of the technology that's used um, and, and why this is a much better way to go than traditional brain uh, you know, surgery, which you did talk about a little bit, but we'll dive a little bit more into it. Is that okay with you? Sounds great. Okay, great. Thanks. And when we return, we'll talk a little bit more about the technology and how it really does work compared to traditional brain surgery. Stay tuned. There's no doubt we're living in challenging times. With the world changing around us, it's more important than ever to keep yourself and your family safe and healthy. From masks to gloves, touch-free thermometers, and medical-grade cleaning solutions, we have everything you need to make it through. Located right down the street from Laguna Woods, adapt to it, we've got you covered. Welcome back. So, Dr. Lewis, tell me um, how the technology is now preferred for preoperative stimulation, rehearsal, and intraoperative navigation. There's so many words. And as well as during surgery, because obviously it is way different than what you're used to. But kind of walk me through, like, what would you be doing when you walk into a, a simulation type situation? So if you think about prior to this technology, you know, the way that we would rehearse for surgery, and this is surprising to most people, but we had no ability to rehearse for surgery. So rehearsing for surgery was thinking through the operation and comparing this patient's two-dimensional scans to your memory of anatomy from medical school. By comparison, when you use a VR headset and fly through in 360 degrees and in 3D, it feels like you're there in the operating room. I can position the head of the patient in VR exactly to the view that I'll have during surgery so that when I look down and I'm kind of looking down the surgical corridor, I can simulate what it's going to feel like when I get there in the operating room. And I can see, I can predict my line of sight. I can predict where the important arteries are going to be. I can predict where the important nerves are going to be. Obviously, this is important because if I do it a couple of times, I get a sense so that that's kind of imprinting that 3D image in my mind so that when I go into surgery, it feels like I've already been there. It feels like deja vu. Like, okay, yeah, I know I've been here before and not in, again, not in an ideal model from anatomy class, but in this particular patient. And that's what's so special about this technology. So where did the technology come from? <laughs> It's kind of an interesting story, actually. Uh, so uh, a couple of Israeli uh, fighter pilots who ran the F-16 program for the Israeli Defense Force were um, on a assignment uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, and they were at a Starbucks talking about, uh, uh, you know, the, their, their mission, what they were working on, creating the, you know, virtual reality flight simulator program for F-16s. And a neurosurgeon happened to be sitting at the next table over and said, hey, you guys do simulation for flight. Can you do simulation for brain surgery? And the idea was born. So they adopted the same 360-degree you know, technology, which they used for simulating fighter jet missions and started using it to simulate brain surgical operations, neurosurgical operations. And, it, 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 you know, it's a pretty, a pretty amazing jump, but uh, like many other things, you know, we borrow from other fields of technology, in this case, borrowing from military technology to improve the lives of our patients. And really, it doesn't get any better than that in my world. <laughs> it's just amazing. So how does it change from one person's brain to another? Because I would imagine they're not all the same, nor is right. whatever is wrong with them. So how do you, do you, is that the simulation part? Yes. So we take the patient's own imaging, you know, their MRIs, their CT scans, and they're loaded into the system. And just like a flight simulator will get three-dimensional information from satellite photos, the system gets the three-dimensional information from slices of the brain. So it takes those slices of the brain, which you may have seen standard, you know, imaging on MRI, they're black and white and they're in sections. It takes those slices and then builds them together into a 3D model, which then is projected into the virtual reality headset. Unbelievable. I mean, that is just really great. And then I know you started this a while ago. Did, were you one of the first to do it? Uh, we, I, we were one of the first hospitals to deploy this uh, on our patients uh, in 2015. There were a handful of others at the time. Um, and since then, we've done more than 1,500 uh, brain tumor operations uh, using this technology at Hope. Wow. Impressive. So people must fly all over just to come see you. <laughs> 
it really makes a difference uh, in our preparation for surgery. You know, there's a book um, uh, by a guy named Chris Ahmad, who's an orthopedic surgeon for the New York Yankees, um, and he talks about the similarities between elite surgeons and elite athletes and how athletes, when they become professional athletes like Michael Jordan, continue to practice on a daily basis, meaning they don't just have games, they have practice five days a week. Surgeons, until virtual reality, had no way to practice. We had no ability to practice. Now, using this technology, we can practice the operation again and again and again until our free throw percentage is 90%, you know, until, we're, until we're getting it right most of the time. Right. Is it, is it taught in school? So uh, at several universities, for example, Stanford has a virtual reality teaching lab where the faculty surgeon and the residents are all flying through the same case at the same time. So it, it, the senior surgeon is kind of leading the other surgeon through the case. The advantage of this as compared to traditional training is you're not letting the resident make a mistake on a human being. You're saying, okay, show me that you can accomplish the, the, the surgical goal here on the virtual reality model, show me that you can do it safely and efficiently, and then put me in coach, I'm ready to go in, you know, to the real thing. <laughs> if I was training residents, I wouldn't let them be operating without it. Right. Well, that's great. That's amazing. Yeah. That is awesome. All right, so we're going to take another break, and when we come back, I want to hear about the patient experiences, and I know that we have a video of one young lady that you helped, but I'm sure there are many other stories, so just uh, hang with us for just a few minutes. Sounds great. All right. And we'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Robert with Laguna Premier. As we all face the disruptions of the COVID-19 pandemic, our first priority is the health of our clients, employees, and community. Hi, I'm Claire. We are adapting, working together like never before. I'm confident we will provide the same high level of service our clients have come to expect. Hi, I'm Jennifer. Many people are still selling and buying homes in Laguna Woods. As a leading real estate firm in Laguna Woods, we are open and here for you. Welcome back. So, Dr. Lewis, in all of the times that you have used this technology, what has been the, the feedback from the patients? And, and how are they, you know, probably enjoying what it is that they're seeing, even though they have something that's wrong? Nevertheless, you can share the information with them. So interestingly, we kind of stumbled upon this idea of using it to help patients better understand their, their surgical problem. Before this, you know, we used, again, traditional imaging, showing them a black and white MRI, which unless you're a surgeon or a radiologist, it looks like a Rorschach blot. Like, okay, you know, is this two witches kissing or is it a bat? Um, so to, to most patients, they don't really get it. Um, and then I was rehearsing one morning and I had to actually change the surgical plan based on the rehearsal. So it doesn't exactly make patients feel comfortable when you change the surgical plan the morning of surgery. So I decided instead of explaining to him why, I wheeled the VR system out into the pre-op area and put it on him and said, you know, this is why my original plan wasn't going to work. Here's why we're changing plans. And so this idea of using it to engage patients was born. Um, and so it was kind of one of those light bulb moments like, wait, if this can help the surgeon understand this better, imagine the impact it can have on a patient who isn't trained in this. And so we really started looking at this and studying it, and we found that it's made a big difference uh, not only in our patient's level of understanding, uh, but also in their uh, final decision making as to where they ultimately decide to have their surgery. Well, and I could also imagine that uh, their anxiety levels may decrease because of that, right? Absolutely. So we actually did a three-year longitudinal study of this. Um, the first year was without virtual reality at all. The second year was using virtual reality, but we didn't have the ability to create patient-specific models at the time, mm -hmm. and then in the office. And then the third one uh, was each patient prior to surgery, a week prior to surgery, gets a 360-degree fly-through of their own brain. And we studied and surveyed them and asked, you know, kind of what is your level of anxiety? What is your level of understanding? How comfortable do you feel with the surgical plan? And we found an enormous increase uh, in the level of understanding of of the patients. In fact, uh, at, at, in the year, in the final year of the study, nearly 80% of patients were rating their level of understanding of their planned brain surgery as a 10 out of 10, which unless you're only treating brain surgeons, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to have that level of understanding. And it just speaks to the power and 
uh, engagement of this technology. And we've kind of broken that down a little further as to why is that? Why is VR so engaging? And it's because it's immersive. So traditional methods of learning um, only access the cognitive learning system of the brain. By comparison, virtual reality accesses all four of the brain's learning systems, cognitive, emotional, experiential, and sensory. So by accessing all four instead of just one of the brain's learning systems, we can really teach them a concept that would normally take years to teach a student in medical school and accelerate that over the course of a 10 or 15 minute conversation. Unbelievable. And, and where do you see this going? So we started with neurosurgery. We've already expanded significantly beyond that. Uh, we are now uh, using this technology for thoracic surgery, for interventional cardiology, uh, for urology, so kidney tumor resections, um, for uh, cancer surgery, uh, for orthopedics, expanding into spine. Um, any medical specialty which uh, is based on imaging, CTs and MRIs, we can make these 360 models for and afford both the patient and the surgeon the ability to navigate through the images and create a better understanding for both. That is just amazing. And, and I know we don't have time to discuss this today, so we'll have you back and, and do it another time. But real quick, just tell me how it's being used to help people with pain management. So in a totally different use case for VR, we're using virtual reality to help patients better understand their pain and the causes of it. So it's called pain neuroscience education. So we teach patients about the pain. Well, you had a hip replacement. This, these nerves are affected. This is why you're having pain in this area. And we also teach them techniques to downregulate that pain. So by using cerebral or descending control of their pain pathways, they can engage and therefore lower their level of pain. And this is one of these things again we've also studied so by teaching patients about their pain and harnessing the power of VR to do it we can decrease not only the patient's sensation of pain but also their emotional reaction to the pain we can lower their fear of pain and we can lower the time they spend thinking about or worrying about the pain so it really does affect all of the uh, aspects of their pain management with the ultimate goal here of lowering opiate consumption. We know these are dangerous medications and the fewer of them you take the better. Anything we can do to lower the consumption of opiates by our patients uh, is a win on all sides. Just amazing. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to explain all of this to us. Of course. And, you know, I, I had heard something about it and I really didn't understand it. So thank you for helping all of us understand it better. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here, and I'm happy to come anytime and, and, and talk some more. All right. Well, hopefully the next time we have you, it'll be in our studio. <laughs> Sounds great. I look forward to it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. We appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, Lisa. Have a great day. All right. You too. And uh, thanks to Dr. Lewis, we have a better understanding of AR and VR and how it's being used today in technology. Uh, I'm Lisa Hart. Thank you for watching Your Health, and please join us next time as we learn more about your health.